Okay, uh, FH player, 1968. Um, some sort of gambit here. If I play uh, bishop e3, alakine gambit system. But I think I've got to play this reasonably quickly if I'm going to play this, a five minute game. Uh, so I'll just try and grab that dark square bishop and plan the dark squares in black's position. Then maybe h3 and g4 actually, just to collect that pawn as well as another idea. Um, if he plays knight d5, uh, maybe I can allow that f file be, be good. Uh, I think this is an alakine gambit system. I think he's played this alakine. Um, d5 here actually, looks like a nice pawn. Uh, so maybe knight, knight g3 and then g5 and the knight takes e4. I love this knight e2 to g3 idea with g4. I saw that once in a book on uh, one of Karpov's uh, uh, wins. Uh, but it, he's disrupted things with that move, unfortunately. Um, I could just take on c6 though and then take on e4. Don't want to lose that d5. So I'm hoping I've got a nagging edge. I play g5 first anyway. Get get a nice knight on e4. I like my juicy knights actually. So if there's one thing you get out today, maybe you can get juicy knights out today. If I get another knight on d5, um, I'm gonna take on b6 and knight d5. That looks pretty nice as well. Cripple the pawn structure. Uh, it stops knight c4 anyway. So two nice knights. Um, are they this logical? Well, can I actually just exchange off this guy to emphasize them? Uh, maybe use the rook along the third rank. Rook b3, that would be good for that pawn. If he takes, which he's not going to. But otherwise h5 and g6, but maybe c3 to try to keep the knight out of d4. c3, king e2. <clears throat> So voluntarily giving up the light square bishop there. Interesting. A3 is useful here, not to be losing the A2 pawn. Uh, so C3. Okay, the counterplay starts. So is C3, I'm losing H4. So he's attacking C2 anyway. Um, right. Interesting. If I lose H4. Does it matter? Let's go for that. Hoping it doesn't matter how much. Checked. Takes. Bishop d7. Say, where's the knight going? Knight g6. Knight g6. Knight g6. That probably does matter. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't think too long. Okay. Resources in the position here. If I can take on the e5 as well. Uh, so that that means, um, but I don't want to expose my knight on e4. I like the cozy knight on e4. Um, so something like, I think I'm going to have to do this to be honest. Uh, let him win h4. So he goes back to g6. I'll leave the h file. What does bishop g4 here for a sec? Uh, and see how it goes. Maybe the D file, in fact, if I just get D file for a sec. Oh, I was losing the exchange. I've just blown the exchange. Whoops. Okay, blown the exchange, but I still got a nice light. Oh. Is it going? It's going. Oh dear. Uh, it's kept for a moment, but Rook D7 discovered checks. Pieces on all on light squares, so I'll risk a discovered check just to try and get the Rook on the seventh. So critical position. Uh, there's rook c7 if I need it. Now what do I do here? The knight on e4 does take care of me a little bit, even on the exchange down. So c4, bishop e6, <clears throat> or bishop f5, knight f6, just to win a pawn there. That might be tasty. I like the idea of the bishop on f5 as well. Here, 
Mind you, now there's bishop d8, so that would force bishop e6 check. There's rook d7 after. Okay, the knight's holding up f2 as well against bishop h4, so if needed. The knight's, I like the knight anyway on e4. I just need to find a way of winning a pawn or two here. Um, so I've got more compensation for being the exchange down. Uh, so if um, pat bishop d5, is that one way to win a pawn? Bishop seems strong, but mind you, now I've allowed rooks yeah, I've allowed harassment. Mind you, knight g5, knight g5, try and win the exchange back. I know it's giving up that beautiful knight, but so check. Actually, the check and then knight d6. He's just blown it, hasn't he? Check, knight d6. Let's go check winning the rook. The knight was good anyway. Okay, I'll have a bit of luck there, but I don't know. I wanted the knight. So we have this. I think Alekhine's played this. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. But this idea of just um, of just playing cheekily knight g e2, just, just to avoid the fracture and then just collect the e4 pawn after. So it's got some similarities to the other gambit we've seen against... Um, uh, the French defense, but uh, uh, Uva's gambit over with b3 because you're trying to collect e4 in that. So, so here, um, there's, there's an idea of trying to collect the e4 pawn, um, but on the other hand, I want the, knight, the nice knights. So, nice knights on on e4, um, except that there's a bit of a technical issue here, uh, losing the exchange, a bit of a shame there. Um, but still, I mean, the persistent properties position, this nice knight, and this bishop's actually quite useful as well, as this shows. Uh, uh, comments or questions on YouTube? Uh, some of these games I might put on chessworld.net in the videos menu, along with replayable games and some further comments. Thanks so much. Uh, correction, just checking up Alexandra Alakai with the white pieces on uh, Chess Gamescom opening explorer. You can find the player and then look at their play with white. So bishop b4, Alakai did actually play an unusual method, not just the e5 is bog standard, but knight e2, which nowadays we wouldn't consider a major move. So knight e2, especially as we're in the evolution of style series, it's interesting to have a look at this as well. Knight e2 here, believe it or not, seven games. Scoring 71% with knight e2. So it is temporarily sacking a pawn, but not committing the bishop to e3. So say black was materialistic and gave up uh, the bishop. If, if bishop e7 here, then he immediately takes on e4, and then maybe bishop e3, and then we're kind of, what does the knight do? Does it go somewhere? It goes back, or we can take either. He, taking he, he won, moving back he drew. But um, let's go back here. So this is an interesting system. Maybe it's worth giving this a punt, but it's knight. It's not bishop e3. Uh, he he never played bishop e3. Correction. Knight e2. And if they did take here, so he prompted black to lose the dark square bishop. Uh, so if they try to hold on to the pawn, there's going to be damage the position here. Um, now if black tries the direct approach for holding on to the pawn. So f3, and if black tries to um, give up that pawn to get the d4 pawn now, there's big trouble, as this game uh, demonstrates in 1933. Washington, 1933, against Wilkins. Um, hope this is visible to you. But um, he opened up, he had good pressure against the black. Uh, so it was a nice uh, looks looks pretty crushing the central pressure and the dynamism uh, displayed here uh, bishops look particularly uh, menacing uh, along with the rocks and a nice little uh, combination at the end so that was a nice nice game there um, the overview and summary of that so knight g e2 if we're looking for a new system not just e5, knight g e2, it's got a backing of a past world champion to it. So we want to play a gambit like this, that's quite interesting. Um, okay, so the bishops proved very effective here in Alakine's hands. 
opening up lines for the two rooks and the two bishops. Okay, fine that you see that. Thanks very much.